I'm making this video because I just want to put the debate to rest. Obviously Vince McMahon retired a few weeks ago and his job as head of creative was given to Triple H and this sparked all sorts of debate over, you know, who would have been the better choice, who would have been the best to do it. And I just I just want to say now for the record, I am in the camp that Bobby Roode would have been a worse candidate for this role than Triple H. Uh, and there's a whole variety of different reasons for that, and I'm just going to go through them now. First of all, he's too tall. Standing at six foot one presents a whole variety of different issues. One issue, the big one, is that someone else in the room might have an idea, and they go to tap him on the shoulder to tell him the idea, but they can't reach the shoulder because it's too high up, and they end up just not tapping him at all, and then the idea never comes to fruition. He has a poor eye for talent. You know, he's been in that team with Dolph Ziggler now for a while, and no disrespect to Dolph Ziggler, but clearly the standard standout of the spirit squad was Mikey. How is he meant to decide the best talent for WWE when he can't even decide the best tag team partner? He's going to be very sad the whole time because he misses beer money and that's going to bring the morale of the entire team down which uh, is obviously not an issue with Triple H. He has a Canadian accent and no offence to any Canadians that might be watching this video but it's obviously impossible to understand. It's basically gibberish. It might as well be a completely different language in and of itself. So how is anybody meant to understand what he's saying in creative meetings and production meetings and so on and so forth? There's no evidence to suggest that he has a driving licence so there's no evidence to suggest that he can get from venue A to venue B. Triple H obviously has a tank. He probably doesn't watch NXT UK, which is essential in knowing what the future of the company is going to consist of. Triple H, you know that he was bet into NXT UK, probably watches it every week multiple times. Bobby Roode has never expressed a desire to take over, despite being a part of NXT TakeOver, whereas with Triple H, you've known from the start what he's all about. Bobby Roode might keep all of the good theme songs to himself after experiencing what it's like to have Glorious as his theme song. There's a chance he might get greedy and take everybody theme song and just play them all over each other when he makes his entrance leaving everybody else with no song so they have to come out to silence which isn't really great from a production standpoint there's a chance he might have a bigger interest in snooker he's never really come out and said that he doesn't have an interest in snooker which implies that he probably watches it on Eurosport quite regularly possibly a big Ronnie O'Sullivan fan on the flip side Triple H has never shown any interest in snooker so he probably has more time to focus on WWE as a company. Bobby Roode was once called Lee Awesome, and you really do have to wonder why he's not called that anymore, because you'd imagine he probably didn't change his name voluntarily when it's, it's such a cool name to begin with. Triple H is the King of Kings, an excellent, cool nickname to have, unless, of course, we're talking about the King of King of Kings, which is a different discussion for a different day. Bobby Roode was never a king to begin with, which means it must be very difficult for him to command respect. Bobby Roode wasn't particularly popular during during the Crimean War, which, you know, there's, there's probably a reason for that. Bobby Roode needed help from Apollo Crews to get his only win of 2022, which, again, if we're talking about gaining the respect of everybody who, who works for you and stuff like that, that's going to be a bit of an issue. Triple H won fights all the time, so there's no issues there. Being Canadian, he may have a bias towards other Canadian wrestlers, and there may be a, a, a partial imbalance towards Canada, so we might be seeing more of Kevin Owens and Victor from The Ascension. He had a match with Roman Reigns that has a 5.71 rating on Cage match which he's never complained about which means he's probably very happy with a 5.71 rating meaning that he doesn't have that sort of winning mentality this person uh, isn't really a big fan of Bobby Roode and I feel like that needs to be taken into account you don't see the same criticism leveled towards Triple H he's very old 46 is incredibly old probably a granddad if not a great granddad um, and that's obviously the issue under the previous regime when you look at WWE Supercard you can see that Bobby Roode only has 17,048 to get, which clearly isn't enough for, you know, to be running a, a wrestling company. His follower count on Twitter is only 441,000, which you know clearly shows that not a lot of people are interested in what he has to say, whereas Triple H is over 7 million, which is more than Logan Paul, who's also another candidate worth mentioning, you know, throwing into the mix, uh, but that's, again, different discussion for a different day. Back in 2016, he posted this unusually low-res, uncropped graphic onto Twitter, which shows that perhaps from a digital standpoint, he doesn't really know what he's doing. It takes Bobby Roode a full hour to have a 60-minute Ironman match, which is pretty embarrassing when you really think about it. Triple H has finished number one twice in the PWI 500. In 2003, Bobby Roode finished 198th behind Mark Jindrak and Nathan Jones, who couldn't even win the Condemned. It really does make you think. 
There's too many Bobbies, you know what I mean? Like, when people talk about Bobby Roode, they could be talking about anyone. They could be talking about Bobby Lashley, Bobby Van Damme, plenty of other Bobbies to completely outshine the original Bobby Roode. Whereas, in Triple H's case, there's only one Triple. When the Hate family decided to name their baby boy Triple, they knew what they were doing. And, you know, identity is very important if you want to run WWE. Triple H was trained by Killer... Kowalski, who is like one of my favorite wrestlers. Like I could name you a hundred Killer Kowalski matches that like I love from the the, the WWWF, the golden era, if you ask me. Whereas uh, Bobby Roode was trained by uh, Shane Sewell, who, if you you know you look through his Wikipedia there and you can see quite clearly is is just some random TNA ref. So how does Bobby Roode really know anything about wrestling when you think about it? There's a very real chance he'd probably get WWE to relocate from Connecticut all the way up to Canada, which would make everybody very cold and sad. Bobby Roode has never voiced his displeasure at all the camera cuts that Kevin Dunn uses, which again implies that he probably really likes them and will probably introduce more, if any. Uh, under the Bobby Roode regime. I always got the impression that Bobby Roode pronounces NXT as next and nobody's ever really corrected him on it, whereas Triple H knows how to pronounce it properly. Bobby Roode was once known as the It Factor in TNA and then the fans called him the Shit Factor and everyone laughed. He had everything. He was in global force wrestling with the greatest booker in world wrestling and it still managed to be a flop with him at the helm. Keeping your ego in check is very important in a position of authority, of course. He was in the TNA Impact game, which is widely regarded by myself as the greatest game of all time. Makes you wonder how big of an ego he has from being in that game and being able to compete in Ultimate X. I hosted a poll where nobody in WWE at all, top to bottom, voted for Bobby Roode to take over as the CEO, which kind of tells you everything you need to know about the support he has on the inside. Bobby Roode was the NXT World Champion, and then NXT got absolutely smashed by AEW in the ratings. So, again, what does that say about the man as a leader? Deliveroo was once called Deliverude, and then he tried to sue them. Okay, I made that one up. (laughs) 